Hey folks, I'm Grimwit from NatchEvil.com, and this is Natchian News. Wilson Gate Episode 15 Meat Antenna by Mike Rojas Guest Voice Month with Evil Seedlet December 1921 The Bit and Bone on Blue Crow Avenue As the winter solstice approached, many Whirlsenders found themselves buying canned yams, cranberry sauce, and geese at the Bit and Bone grocery store. The cheer of Christmas was greater than the increased danger brought on by longer foggy nights. It was a merry time for Whirlsen Gate and suicide rates had been lower than any other month of the year. Destroyed bodies with soulless eyes sung dark carols door to door, even if the house was empty. But when not, they were never turned down a proper cup of punch to warm them up on the snowy dark evenings. Back then, punch was served hot with liquor, even during prohibition. We should ignore the fact that the dark carols were auguries of mind control compelling refreshments, and just keep with the holiday spirit. Even with the joy spreading throughout the haunted toy shops and Christmas colors of hot steaming blood on green grass, the oddities that made World Sin notorious around Knox's state continued. This is a tale about something that hadn't happened in living memory. The day before the solstice, a silent creature spoke. Martin Fandrick, who fancied himself the sheriff of Whirlsend, was the first to hear the strange noise as he was purchasing a bag of sugar from the clerk. When he passed on his money, the clerk moved autonomously as per routine, but spoke. Pagos flows like a whimper. They who fall under his claw will suffer a thousand years. It whispered. You know, my last marriage felt like a thousand years of suffering, said Martin. Well, thanks, clerk. He took his change and left. Later, Trevor was pointing at the clerk with his jaw on the floor. He talks. In walked another customer, the mayor, 
greeting the clerk as he passed by. The clerk answered back, Needles in gums. Your eyes will be peeled open layer by layer. That reminds me, said the mayor. I need onions. Where do you keep them? A landscape of instruments for extracting blood. Yet life remains while the air is pulled out. The clerk answered, pointing to a pile of onion bags in the corner, next to the bathroom and the book that talks to passers-by. It will only be a matter of time before the soul breaks. Thanks! The mayor went cheerfully on his way. Does no one else hear this? Trevor began pushing on his temples. Okay, maybe I'm imagining it. Nelsie! Where are you? Over here, Mr. C. Nelsie's hand shot out of the bargain bin of bandages and waved. She was digging for antiseptic when she had fallen in half an hour ago and had been trying to work her way out. I think I found one of the medicine needles in here. Oop, I hope that wasn't filled with nothing. Trevor grabbed a toothbrush and pulled out a dollar from his billfold. Nelsie, go buy this for me and ask the clerk if it's soft or hard bristle. Sure thing, Mr. C. Let me just... There was a clatter as Nelsie fell out of the bin, pulling a shelf of kitchen cutlery on top of her. I'm okay, she declared. The girl who emerged from under the catastrophe was already covered in medical tape and bandages that preemptively helped stop the bleeding. She hopped from the clutter and skipped past Trevor, swiping the dollar and the toothbrush. Hey, Mr. Clark. Is this, what do you call, a soft toothbrush? New words shall be written in bleeding pages to describe innovative pain, the clerk answered. You ain't just whistling Dixie, mister. I got the scar on the back of my knee that throbs something terrible. Pagos shall heat the soft palate of humanity before branding white-hot fear into its unconsciousness. Okay, got it. Nelsie exchanged money with the clerk and skipped back to Trevor. He says it's soft bristle. Trevor scratched his head. And you didn't find anything odd? I sure did. Nelsie frowned. If you ask me, that toothbrush costs way too much. The mayor put a huge bag of onions on the counter and paid for it. Thanks, clerk. You gonna show up at the town gathering tomorrow? The clerk stared long at the mayor and said, The trees hide him, our king. Our king, who is sister to flies. The flies that itch and burn like the eyes of our children. Well, it's your loss. I figure it'll be a real knee slapper. I'm even bringing my best moonshine. Well, I'll see you around. And so the mayor left, dragging his onions behind him. That was odd, too, Trevor said. Nelsie shrugged. I don't know, Mr. C. Maybe he uses onions in his booze. Can you not hear the clerk talking? Sure. But the clerk doesn't talk. He talks to me. And what does he say? Well, just earlier he says I got some pretty eyes and they was gonna be pulled out with rusty pliers. Then he suggested this eyeliner what come on a knife or something. Ain't that right, clerk? The clerk said nothing. Nelsie turned to Trevor. He takes a second to warm up. The whispers crawled out of the clerk's mouth like running locusts. Cruel maggots of winter will eat under the skin. Ah, there he goes. As the clerk yammered on obscenities and horrors, Trevor narrowed his eyes and stepped closer, examining the creature behind the register. I think he's receiving something like a radio transmission. Maybe there's nothing inside the clerk, and he's being filled with the evil of this town. Trevor knocked on the counter and yelled. Hey, who's in there? Uh, leave him alone, Mr. C. He's just a low-wage worker trying to make ends meet, you know? Low-wage? How do we know the ends he needs to meet? Trevor turned his head, looking at its face. Or that it's a heathen. Nelsie poked her head over Trevor's shoulder while the man grabbed the clerk by the ears and pulled it close. Let's start with something simple, huh? What is your name? The normally slacked jaw began pumping out random whispers that sounded like, Before the brains of man could suffer, we tore the wings off birds to hear them scream. That's a title, not a name. 
What is your name? Under the woods he wanders, burrowing like needles through the nerve endings. Yeah, there's nothing in there, Nelsie. He's just a radio antenna. Nelsie shrugged again. So? What now, Mr. C? Trevor put down a pack of luckies. Now, I buy my smokes. The clerk, possessed as it was by some unholy evil, whispered, That'll be twenty cents. You ain't just whistling Dixie, mister. I got this scar on my back of my knee that looks... Blah, 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 blah. You ain't... <clears throat> You ain't just whistling Dixie, mister. I got the scar on the back of my knee that throbs up. Oh, 